It's been a while since I made a video, but I've been playing with the Series 1 and 2 18 tiny microcontrollers, and they are quite interesting. In the past, I tried the old AT Tiny 85. Programming them was a hassle because so many pins were involved. But, as many have pointed out, the Series 1 and 2 parts changed the game by using UPDI. Only a single pin is needed for programming, and programming can be done in circuit. Also, Arduino supports these devices, so a little 8-pin part like the ATtiny412 works like a tiny Arduino with 5 useful pins. In this video, I will show how to get started and demonstrate several capabilities using an ATtiny412. The Series 1 and 2 parts have many interesting peripherals, often not directly supported by Arduino. I may talk about them in future videos. Here's a block diagram. You can see many interesting things. Lots of timers, hardware for SPI and I2C, DACs and ADCs, an analog comparator, configurable logic, a sleep controller, and an interesting event system that ties components together. This article on Technoblogy is a useful resource. I'll put a link below. It contains lots of information about the 1 series and the 2 series and, and even the 0 series. So for example, if I scroll down, we'll see part numbering schemes. And so you can see that the parts range in size, flash size, from 2K to 32K, and from pin count from 8 to 24. And there are three series. The series 0 parts tend to not be as good a value, so the 1 and 2 series parts are the interesting ones. And then this table is also very helpful. And it's organized such that on the horizontal axis you have pin count of the package, and on the vertical axis you have size in terms of flash and SRAM. And so one thing you'll notice is that the price differences aren't that large. I mean, they range from $1.40 to $0.55. Cents. So there's, these are all pretty cheap parts. And so that would tend to make you want to look at or be most interested in the uppermost part in a column. So the ATtiny412 is the most capable part available in an 8-pin package. And so that's why I'm using it. And um, also the AT Tiny 3224 in a 14 pin package is particularly interesting. And then the 3226 and the 3216 are interesting parts because they're the most capable parts in uh, 20 pin packages. Now, none of these are available in through hole dip packages. So you have to deal with surface mount soldering. And the SOIC packages are large enough that people who aren't great experts in surface mount soldering can, can deal with them, I think. Uh, I don't have much trouble with them. So the SOIC uh, packages are also good to look at, and that limits you to the 20 pins. And so, and there's lots of other information on this website that you can look at. It goes into lots of details of, about the different peripherals and, and that sort of thing. Megatiny Core is the software package that provides Arduino support for the Series 1 and Series 2 parts, and this is the GitHub that hosts it. So this GitHub is another critical resource. And in fact, this website contains lots of documentation, even though it's occasionally cryptic. I'll put a link to this website below as well. And so as we scroll down, we'll see some of this information, lots of warnings that you should read. Um, and uh, all this, like this is an interesting section here. So talking about which versions you should use, so it's saying Arduino 1.8.13 is strongly recommended. I'm using 1.8.19 with no problem. It worked out of the box on two different flavors of Unix, uh, Ubuntu and Fedora 41. And the reason for that is that this somewhat ugly workaround that's described here is already applied. You, you don't have to do it yourself. It'll work out of the box. And so here you can click and there's some more installation guide information. And so if I click there and scroll down a little bit, you actually see kind of a key bit of information here. And this is the, the URL that you're supposed to paste into Arduino, as I'll show you. But I'll also show you a workaround for when this doesn't necessarily work. So bottom line, this is another critical website, so be sure to take a look at it. You're going to need a programmer for the AT Tiny device. You can make one by modifying a very cheap USB to serial adapter. You have to add a 4.7K resistor between the RXD and TXD pins on the serial side. I like the adapter shown here because it has a convenient place to solder the 4.7K resistor as shown. I bought this from Amazon. I'll put a link below, but I think you can also find these on AliExpress. 
They're based on the FTD2242 chip. It looks like this, with the resistor soldered on. To use it, connect RXD, the yellow wire, to the ATtiny UPDI pin and also connect ground. There's a jumper to select 3.3 or 5 volt signaling. If you go with 5 volt, which I recommend, you can even use the red wire to power a small project. That's what I do in this video. If you can't find this USB to serial adapter, others can work too. Just pay attention to signaling levels. Arduino is running, so you can see we have version 1.8.19, and that currently the only boards available to us are the basic Arduino boards. So we have to add support for the ATtiny boards, the Series 1 and Series 2 boards. And so the way you do that is you open Preferences, and you're supposed to enter the URL of an additional board manager here. And the instructions told us that we should be using this HTTP drazzy.com thing as that URL. But I happen to know that at least today that isn't going to work. And I can show you that by using wget to try to get that file under Linux. So I'll say here, copy, paste. And we see error messages, uh, really two error messages. One is that despite the instructions, we should probably be using https.drazzy.com. And, uh, but even that's not going to work today. And the reason for that is that drazzy.com has let its SSL certificate expire. I think that happened last year also. So apparently that happens from time to time. So I'll show you a trick to, to get around that. And so what we can do is use wget with minus no check certificate to get the file like this. And, and so now that JSON file is, is available to us in the Arduino directory. And so you could also get that file using a web browser, but you'd have to, you know, tell it to ignore that it's a security problem and that sort of thing. Uh, but I think it's okay in this case. But now once we have that file locally, we can use a local URL inside the Arduino, so I just paste that, starting with file and then the path to the file that I just downloaded with wget. And so that's done. And now we can go to board manager and, and that comes up and takes a little while to figure out what it's got. And so now inside here, we can type the name of the ATtiny series one and series two Arduino support package, mega tiny core. And it should find it. And there it is. And so if I go down here, the latest version is 2.6.10, I can say install. And so that'll take a little while, but it will do the installation. Now, one thing I should say is that using this local URL is not a good thing. So you should monitor the Drazzy site. And when they get their certificate fixed, you should actually paste into the preferences where we just saw HTTPS you know, drazzypackage.com like here, um, you know, similar to what the instructions were telling us to do. So now we'll just wait while this finishes. After several minutes, the installation finished, so I can close this board manager thing. And let's open a different sketch. So if I say open, and I've got one that I've prepared for us, and I can close this original thing. And so now I have to tell Arduino to use the right board for the sketch. So I go to tools and board. And so now I have mega tiny core boards available to me. So I go down here and I pick AT tiny 412 because that's what I've got. And then if I go back to it after a little while, apparently it has to think about this. Okay. So now I go back to it and there's some other things that I can change. Like inside here, um, well, I could, you could select the chip. It's already correct. The 412, you can pick different clock speeds. So at 5 volts, 20 megahertz is the maximum clock speed that this supports. But here you can change the clock speed that you're going to run the board at. And what else is interesting? Well, let's see. Um, printf choices. Printf takes a lot of memory when you use it. And so we'll, we'll see that later. But you have a choice here to make it either minimal or full or the default. So you can adjust that depending on how much memory you have available for debug printing. And then finally, port of your board. You have to pick the right port, which for me, I believe, is USB 0. There's one other important setting that I almost forgot. You have to pick your programmer. So under Tools, go down to Programmer. And then there are lots of choices. 
And we're using serial UPDI with the modified USB to serial converter that we talked about. And so there are several choices for this. And the safest one is this slow 57600 baud. And so you can experiment with the others as well. And also, incidentally, under Linux, uh, in order to be able to access the device to, to do the programming, you have to be a member of group dialout. So under Linux, the command to do that is this sudo usermod minus a minus g dial out your username. So don't forget to do that too. And now we should be able to build and, and run the program. But first, let's take a look at it. So the first thing we notice is this include tm1637 display.h. That implies that we're using a library that we have to install. And this is just a standard Arduino library. It would work with any Arduino. But to install that library, we have to go to manage libraries. And then that will come up and take a little while to do it. All right, so now it's updating its list of installed libraries, which also takes a little bit of time. And so about a minute later, we're able to look for our library, which I think is called TM1637. And so it looks like it's not quite ready for me yet. The computer I'm running on is not especially fast. It's, it's very old. OK, there it goes. And so now if I scroll down, maybe I'll find my library. It's still not ready. So we wait a little bit longer. OK, now I think it's ready. And let's see if we can find our library. Here it is. This is the one that we want, TM1637. So I say install, and that'll take a minute or two to install. And that's done, so I'll close this window. And now we should be ready to build and run. But before we do that, let's take a look at the hardware on the board in a little bit more depth so that we can make this, the software here easier to understand. Here's a diagram of today's demo. Pin numbering is a bit confusing. Normal package pins are shown in blue, but the pins actually used in the Arduino API are in red. So you can see Arduino pin 3 is connected to an LED. A potentiometer configured as a voltage divider is connected to pin 4. The sketch does an analog read of this and uses it to control the blink rate of the LED. But the LED does not blink on and off. Instead, it varies in brightness because the LED is actually driven by a PWM signal from an Arduino analog write. Pins 1 and 2 connect to a 7-segment LED display. The value from the pot is displayed on it. Finally, debug serial prints are on pin 2, connected to a USB serial adapter. And here's the USB serial adapter I'm using for serial prints. For no good reason, I'm using a different model than the one I used to build the programmer. Here's the project on the breadboard. The ATtiny412 I soldered to a dip adapter is at the top. The yellow, red, and black wires on the left go to the programmer I built by adding the resistor. And the white and black wires on the right go to the USB serial adapter I'm using for debug prints. Back to the software, it's all pretty simple. It's just plain ordinary Arduino, which I guess is the point. So we set our various pins, and then in setup we enable the serial port to 115200 baud, assuming we're going to use it, set the LED pin to be the output, set the display of the seven segment display to the minimum so it doesn't blow out my camera, and then inside the loop we do an analog read of the pot, and then smooth it a little bit, and sort of round it to keep the display from jumping around. And then here's how you display a number on the seven segment LED display. So that's very simple. And then this part here just controls the LED brightness change and, and also the print when, when the LED brightness changes. So I'm essentially just using the pot valve to set the amount of time to wait before changing the LED state. And that's really all it is. Now let's build and see the system in action. But first, I want to disable the printing because I want to show you the difference that it makes in the size of the images. So now I'll press this button here, click that button there, and it will and it will build and load. So this is the flashing process, which just completed. But now we'll scroll back up, and it shows us the size of the images. So uh, without printing, it's taking 34% of the program storage space, the flash, and 8% of the dynamic memory. So try to remember 34% and 8%. So now let's uh, put the printing back in because we want to see it work and build a second time, build and load a second time. And so I guess now it's flashing 
and the program's running, but we'll scroll back here and we'll see that we're using a lot more flash and RAM. So it went from 34% to 69%, and the amount of RAM used went way up. Um, it's still clear that, that even this small ATtiny412 has enough memory to do something interesting, but the bigger ATtinys are obviously better still. So anyway, now let's see what the system's doing because it's running. So I'll move this out of the way, and we can see several things. We can see that the potentiometer is reading 1020, and that about once per second, every 1020 milliseconds or so, the LED is changing in brightness. And you can also see that the prints are occurring about once per second. It's printing the pot value as well as displaying it on the seven segment LED display. And you can also see the oscilloscope output showing the PWM working. So when the LED is bright, the duty cycle is greater and high more of the time. And when the LED is dim, the duty cycle is smaller. And so now if I carefully reach over and, and change the pot, we can see that we can change the rate at which the LED blinks with varying brightnesses. And so I'll do that now and we'll make it, we'll make it blink fast. So now it's both blinking and printing quite a bit faster. And we can go faster still. And then we can turn it back to about once per second. Like so. So you can see the system's working pretty well. It's a, a pretty nice little part. I'll end this video here. We've seen how AT Tiny devices support Arduino and are easy to program using UPDI. Perhaps in future videos, I'll explore more advanced features using an AT Tiny 3224, a 14-pin device with more resources, including 32 kbytes of flash and 3 kbytes of RAM. Thanks for watching.